Good morning. Good to see you out this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful Sabbath morning, as are all Sabbath mornings. They are all beautiful because they're the Sabbath. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'd like to welcome those that are watching online, those that are here. We are going to get started as, <coughs> excuse me, this is the first Sabbath of the month, which means that we have to kind of close it down, I think, five minutes earlier to allow personal ministry to come and minister to you. Amen. Amen for personal ministry. So this morning, we're going to go ahead. This morning, we are on lesson number nine. Lesson number nine. And the title is, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Calvin, Father, we thank you for a beautiful Sabbath day. In the fact that it is the Sabbath, but not only that, that we are here, Lord. It's a beautiful day. We thank you for carrying us through this week, through the trying times of this week, carrying us through our trials, our tribulations, our concerns, and bringing us up to another Sabbath day where we can leave them at your feet. We ask that you would bless those that are here. Bless those that are watching, listening online. Bless those that are on their way. Help us to have a great Sabbath in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our memory text is found in Psalms 118, 22 and 23. And it reads, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was Christ's doing. This was the Lord's doing, should I say. It is marvelous in our eyes. If you do not have any experience of knowledge of construction, the word cornerstone has significance in construction. Cornerstone is a part of a foundation where that stone is it should be, and it usually is, the strongest part of the building. The strongest part of the building. When people demolish buildings, they actually go in and they find the strongest points. They stick explosives in those strong points. And at a certain time and in certain sequence, they detonate those explosives. And if you've ever seen on TV uh, where uh, they bring a building down, they demolish a building, and I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing it done one time in my life, the old diplomat, you remember the old diplomat hotel? I was on standby when they brought that building down. And they go in, they find the support beams and the very critical points of the building they drill holes and they stick dynamite in them. Then a computer actually triggers them electronically. They'll go and they'll kill the weakest ones first. Explosion, 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 explosion. It's, it's like a boom, 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 boom. It'll be a split second, then you hear boom. Then they'll kill the most strong part of the building. And I, it's scientific because it takes them months to plan it. That building set, I think it was 20-something stories high. They dropped a 20-something story building and it imploded just like that. It didn't splatter out. It imploded and they dropped all of it. And I kid you not, the rubble, because it imploded inside, it did not move five to six feet beyond the outside wall. They dropped it all in one spot. That's because of the way the cornerstone was destroyed. But I say that to say this. The chief's cornerstone is Christ Jesus. That was Lord's doing. He is the chief cornerstone. Now, <clears throat> the topics revealed in Psalms includes Christ's deity. We're talking about this. Our, our quarter is the book of Psalms. The topics revealed in Psalms includes his deity, his sonship, his obedience, his zeal for God's temple, his identity as the good shepherd, his betrayal, his suffering, his bones not being broken, his death, 
resurrection, ascension, and priesthood and kingship. It's all there. This was done hundreds of years before Christ even came. Hundreds of years. All of this was mentioned in the book of Psalms. That's one of the beauties of Psalms. And if anybody tells you that they forget the Old Testament because of the New Testament, they cannot. Because the Old Testament told you about the New Testament. And the New Testament points back to the Old Testament. So therefore, they validate each other. One validates the other. Let's move. Sunday. Sunday. Divine, <coughs> excuse me, self-sacrificing shepherd. Divine self-sacrificing shepherd. The image, of, the image of the Lord as shepherd and God's people as his sheep of his pasture highlights God's guidance and sustaining care of his people and the people's dependence on God to meet all of their needs. Shepherds. Shepherds are very unique individuals. You have to be a certain mindset to be a good shepherd. Shepherds defend their flock against all threats. All threats have to be defended by the shepherd. If the shepherd is out tending the flock and a lion comes up, does the shepherd have to defend the flock? Yes, he does. If a bear comes up, does the shepherd have to defend this flock? Yes, he does. Thieves, foxes, any threat that threatens the flock, the shepherd has to defend it. Divine self-sacrificing shepherd. Who's known as the good shepherd? Jesus, the good shepherd. Does he defend against all threats? Mmm, provide it. Provide it, you are doing what he asks you to do. Provide it. Now, <coughs> the intimate bond between the divine shepherd and his flock is seen as the flock's unmistakably knowing the shepherd's voice. You ever heard that term, my sheep know my voice? That's what says that the shepherds in the Middle East can, can take and mingle flocks together. Mingle them together, just mix two or three flocks, and that the shepherd can go off, and by his voice, the sheep will come out of that flock to that shepherd. Do you know his voice? As a member of his flock, do you know his voice? You should. Now, is it safe to say that sometimes we have too much going on? We have too much confusion, too much distraction going on. Sometimes it's hard for us to hear his voice. Hmm? Sometimes do we listen to our voice more than his? Why? He's the shepherd. You're not the shepherd. He defends against all threats. You aren't the shepherd. Some things you can't defend yourself against. Why are you listening to your voice instead of listening to his voice? Huh? Say again. Hmm. So you're saying we, we sometimes think we got a little more sense than God? We, we are wiser than God. Ooh, help us, Lord. Help us. We do that. That's human nature. Human nature's first inclination is to usually help myself rather than depend on somebody else. You know, we have that, 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 that flaw in our character says if we depend on somebody else, we might seem weak. Which of you wants to appear to be weak? Nobody. Nobody. You know, how, you know how society has, has built us to the point where if we appear to be weak, we are an easy target. Somebody will take advantage of us if we appear to be weak. 
But by the same token, if we appear to be strong, we kind of keep people off of us. We kind of seem to be, uh, no, I don't want to try him. He's just, he's just yeah, he ain't, he ain't the easy mark. But yet and still, this same philosophy of trying to appear to be strong on our own, it gets us in trouble. It gets us in trouble. And we can get ourselves in trouble. Who's our own worst enemy? That's you? I already know I'm my own worst enemy. I'm, I'm my own worst enemy because, you know, and, and I assume that everybody here is the same and some of you watching. When we are at a certain status in life, a certain mindset, we have a confidence in ourselves. Do you not? You have a confidence in yourself. At that point, you are putting yourself to be just a little more than the average person because you are where you are. You haven't gotten there on, your, on, on just your knowledge. Even though Christ put you in a position, Christ helped you to get where you are, sometimes we can get a little above ourselves. We can forget. Now granted, the Bible says that it's harder for a rich man to get than the eye, a camel in the eye of a needle. Because once you get to a certain status, a lot of us forget God. Put it on us. That's what we mess up at. We put it on us. And when we put it on us, we take him out of the equation. And last week or week before it said in the lesson, without me, you can do nothing. So when you remove him, now you're setting yourself up for a fall. But, come on. Come on. Uh-huh. Watch out now. Come on. Uh-uh. Uh huh. Exactly. Exactly. No, no. See, when when we talk about the good shepherd, <clears throat> the good shepherd. That's what we're talking about: self-sacrificing divine shepherd. A shepherd cares for how many needs of the flock. Some, all, whatever the flock needs, does the shepherd not provide? So therefore, just as the brother said, it does not have to be all spiritual. Because everything that you do, he sees. God sees everything that you do. He has to protect you against all threats. So therefore, Every aspect of your life has to be at his bidding. He'll control that only if, just like the brother said, if you are in constant contact. Now, if you lose contact, can he do anything for you? Hmm? If you lose contact, can he do anything for you? Huh? You gotta hear him, but if you lose contact, can you hear him? Come on. <laughs> uh 
Ja. <laughs> That's it. He provides for you. That's what he does. That's what a shepherd does for the flock. It, he defends against all threats and he provides every need of the flock. That's what he does. Now, we are running. Yeah. Okay, let's move to Monday. Any comments on Sunday? Divine self sacrifice and shepherd. Monday is the suffering Messiah. The suffering Messiah. The torment of Christ's separation from his father caused by Christ carrying the world's sins can be measured only by the extent of their closeness, namely their unparalleled oneness. Upon Christ as our substitute and surety was laid the iniquity of us all. He carried the sins of all of us, every single one of us. He was counted a transgressor that he might redeem us from the condemnation of the law. The condemnation of the law. What does that mean? Somebody take a shot at that. We were all sinners and we were all to die. So the law condemned us as sinners. But being as Christ was labeled a transgressor, was he a transgressor? Oh, so he wasn't a transgressor. He was labeled as a transgressor. Now, say again. Oh, I thought you said so. Because he carried the sins of all of us transgressors, that moment of separation that moment of separation, the darkness, the pain that he felt. You know how you spend time with somebody every day, multiple times a day, constantly, constantly in contact. Then you don't hear that voice. You don't have that connection. What does it do for you? Does it depress you? Does it distress you? Does it agonize you? It hurts. It hurts. He was labeled a transgressor, but he might redeem us from the condemnation of law. The guilt of every descendant of Adam was pressing upon his heart. I mean, imagine how many people, all their sins pressing on his heart. The wrath of God against sin. Get this. The wrath of God against sin, the terrible manifestation of his displeasure because of iniquity, filled the soul of his son with consternation. Did anybody look up the word consternation? Somebody take a look at somebody take a shot at it for me. All of that sin and guilt weighed upon him, and it filled his heart with consternation. What? Say again. It weighed heavily upon him. But consternation means he did not expect it. He did not expect it. It kind of surprised him. You ever, when you think about the plan of salvation being put together in heaven, just before the, the, the foundation of the world, the plan of salvation. Satan wasn't in on it, so he went his way. That's why the plan of salvation was put in place because of him. When it was put in his place, did God already know that he would have to go to the cross? Huh? Did Jesus know that he was going to have to go to the cross? That's what he came for. So how must he have felt when something came about that he did not expect? It was a surprise, that guilt of all of that pressure, what it would do to the relationship between him and his father, the separation that it would cause, it surprised him, filled his heart with consternation. The, 
This is what, that's what Ellen White said in, De in Desire of Ages. The threatening animal imagery of strong bulls, roaring lions, and dogs highlighted the people's cruelty and animosity that Christ, who is compared to a harmless and helpless worm, met in his final hours. The hate that they had toward him. Can you imagine someone displaying all that hate, all that venom, all that anger and that animosity and all that toward him and him saying to himself, and I came to save them. I came to save them and this is how they feel. Could you or I have went through that? Probably not. Probably not. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go on record as saying no. Could not go through that. But he endured it. Suffering Messiah. Okay, got about 10. Let's move Tuesday. Come on. Come on. Uh-huh. They've changed a lot of things. So, and I would tell people, if you have an original copy, keep it. If you have an original copy, keep it. The new ones that come. Okay. Yeah. Yep. How about that? Yeah. Tuesday. Forever faithful to his covenant. Forever faithful to his covenant. Davidic covenant contains God's promise of everlasting support to David's line and prosperity of God's people. However, even the devoted kings, such as King David, were not always faithful to the Lord. Hmm, wonder why. Psalms 89 laments over the harsh reality that seems to indicate that the glorious promises of the Davidic covenant have been lost. So that means, is Israel hopelessly deserted by God? No. God's wrath, yes, it is an expression of divine judgment, yet it does not last forever because his everlasting love forgives people's sins when people repent. However, while it lasts, God's discontent with his erring people is serious. Serious. Yet they ask, how long? Appealing to the passing character of God's wrath. God's faithfulness to remember his grace is one of those attributes where you are so glad that he has it. You are so glad that he has it. See, when they ask, how long? That is acknowledging that you've done wrong. God's abandoned you. His anger is upon you, but you definitely know how long it's going to last. We know, Lord, that you're not happy with what we're doing, but can we move past this and get back to your grace and mercy and forgiveness? So, are you ever forgotten? No. But while he is anger, somebody's got some Somebody got to suffer. I'll get past it. But while I'm in it, it's serious. It is very serious. While I am angry at you. In short, although the human component of the, of the covenant fails, that's us, we are the human component, the people could rest on the promise that God's unchanging purposes through the Messiah, who embodies all righteousness and salvation of Israel, and of the whole world. That is, in the end, God will prevail and his kingdom will be established forever, but only, only because of Christ, not none of y'all. Only because of Christ, not none of y'all. Nothing we can do. Only because of Christ. All I can say is, Lord, help us. 
Let me quickly try and get some of this done. Eternal King, Wednesday. Eternal King of unrivaled power. Eternal King of unrivaled power. That title says it usually all. I think a couple of weeks ago, we were doing a lesson that says, uh, the people ask, who is like thee? I'll ask the question again. Who do you know is like God? Who do you know have done whatever he's done, provided whatever he's provided, defended where he's defended, and been as faithful as he has been? Who do you know that is like God? There's none like him. I've always said one of my favorite terms in the Bible is two words. I am. I am. You know why he says I am? He doesn't finish it. I could say I am Brother Roe. You are Sister Scipio. I am. You don't finish it because whatever you want to Put behind it, that's what he is. I can't say I'm the mechanic. I can't say I'm the surgeon. Definitely can't say I'm the savior. But he says, I am whatever you want slash need me to be, I am. I am that I am. I just, I just came across a movie the other day. Uh, and it had a, it had a, it had a one that that could have pre, uh, it could apply to God. It says, "I am that man. He is that man. Whatever you need, he is that man." Let's go. Uh, is there anyone that has any comments on Wednesday, the Eternal King of Unrivaled Power? If the one that sits at the right hand of God is Lord, then the Lord is Messiah, since the latter is also seen at the right. In the end, Christ will abolish victory over his enemies. That's when we talk about his foot, his, uh, make his enemies his footstool. Let's go to Thursday. Thursday, eternal priest in the order of Melchizedek. When you get a minute, go home and read about Melchizedek. Very good story, Melchizedek. God endows the Messiah with an everlasting kingship and the priesthood of a superior rank, the order of Melchizedek. Hmm. The Lord seals his word, the solemn promise, God's oath not to relent from giving us a perfect priest is a sign of his grace. People's sin and open rebellions constantly provoke God to abandon his people. But... God's oath is unchangeable and guarantees God's grace in revoking his judgment over the reluctant people. Judgment over the reluctant people. Hmm. We are stiff-necked, hard-hearted, hard-headed, should I say, in almost everything that we do. Sometimes uh, we get confused with, if, if you read the Bible, sometimes you get confused with uh, certain relations like uh, God does not change. Does God change? Hmm? Some question, does, does God change? Huh? He doesn't change, but by the same token, this says his change in revoking his judgment over relent, over, un, over the repentant people. Does revoke mean change? Huh? Huh? If you repent, Will he change his judgment? Huh? There you go. That's what I want you to see. 
He'll change his judgment, but he does not change. He still hates sin. He still loves the sinner. He will not change his stand on sin. But if you change your life, he'll change. He'll change for you. Because if you're out there doing anything and everything and sin and sin, and, ah, he don't want nothing to do with you. Because sin has already condemned you. The law has already condemned you. But if you change, now, he'll change his judgment. He'll change his judgment. Because you change. If you get in his will, he has to change. That's what he says. But his stance on certain things does not change. Will he allow sin to enter heaven? No. He will not allow sin to enter heaven. So to get in heaven, you have to have no sin. As long as you are in sinful mode. But as soon as you come out, you become sinless, you become righteous. You have, he says, enter thou into the joy. Well, well done. Welcome. You're welcome to come in. He will not change, but he will change his judgment, provided you do what you need to do. Okay. When we talk about repenting people, divine, this is the Davidic oath, um, the Davidic covenant. The divine oath introduces a novel, I'll take that back. We are talking about the eternal priest in the order of Melchizedek. The divine oath introduces a novel element of the Davidic covenant by declaring the Messiah king is also a priest. The king is also a priest. The Bible never speaks of a king, King David, or any other Israelite king as possessing the priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. When we talk about the children of Israel, uh, tribe of the Levites, what were they in charge of? Levites, what were they in charge of? The sacrifices and the sanctuary. They were the order of the Levites, Levitical priests. They handled the moving, the taking down, the maintenance, and the, uh, uh, the construction of the sanctuary. Nobody else could do that. Even when the sanctuary was put in place, who resided right around the sanctuary? The Levites. Other tribes, you couldn't come close. This, this is their, that's their thing. No other king has ever held the same title as a priest. You were a king, that's it. The Levites were the priests. Everybody had to bring their sacrifices to the Levites and then they would offer them for you. Christ holds both titles. Is he king? Is he provide, providing a priestly ministry on your behalf in the sanctuary at this time? Both titles. No other king can say that he does that. Both titles. The Old Testament never speaks of a king possessing the priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. Being both divine king and everlasting priest, Christ has unprecedented superiority over human priests and kings. Hmm. He serves in the heavenly sanctuary. His priesthood is not affected by sin or death like that of human priests. And thus, this is the best, this is the best part. He can intercede for and save his people forever. Forever. You always have somebody interceding on your behalf forever. The people that came before us, someone is interceding for them. 
after we pass, those people that are going to come, he is interceding for them forever. Do you not? Come on. I ain't got a little bit of time, so go ahead. Come on. <laughs> Mine? I, I am the type of person where if there is not a clear cut answer in here, I don't burn a lot of brain power on trying to figure out stuff like that. The Bible says, does anybody know where he was born? That's, that's a question, my question back to you. Okay. When he died, when he died, did it, does anybody know where he went? Not me. I ain't worrying about that. <laughs> the Bible didn't tell me I can't worry about that. Either. Because see, now I'm trying to get into the mysteries of the Bible that I can't come up with. If I came up with an answer where he was born or where he went, I'd be, I'd be disputing this. I'd be, I'd be that, that would not. I would be going above my pay grade. And they don't pay me for this. I, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I would not attempt certain things I don't even attempt to worry about. I just try and stay in my lane. Now, if God in his infinite wisdom decide to give me something, to give me some kind of insight on how, it, I welcome it. I welcome it. And if someone came to me with a viable answer, I would look. I would look, maybe look in a little bit of Sister White's, and if that answer does not correlate with this, it don't register. I mean, is that good enough? I mean, is that, is that sufficient for you? Because I can't answer it. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I can't answer it. If anybody else would like to take a shot at it, please feel free. Where was Melchizedek born? Bible doesn't say when he died. Right, the Bible doesn't say. I would never try and speculate on when, where, or what. If the Bible doesn't say it, I can't. Uh, no. Like I said, that's above my pay grade. Uh, is is um, is personal ministry supposed to be coming up this morning? Because it says first Sabbath. I should shut down a little early to give personal ministry their time. I don't see anybody, not this morning? Okay. Say again? Personal ministry is supposed to come up five minutes early. It's time. Oh, we do have somebody. Okay, amen, amen. That, hold it. I would say y'all give a hand for the lovely sister role. Get it, sister role, brother role. I'm trying to, Brother Sims, I'm trying to, I'm trying, boy, I'm trying to build some points up here. Yeah. Oh, you're going to pay for that. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your participation. Uh, let us close out. Let's pray. Canon Father, we thank you for your word, for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your long suffering and patience with us. Be with each and everyone that is here, those that are listening, those that are on their way. Bless us to this end in Jesus' name. Amen. It's up. Personal ministry time. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So this is a time that the pastor has asked us once a month to um, spend a little time in prayer before the service begins. And I got a call last night to take to handle this, so I'm going to do what I can in the last moment. Um, but shall we bow our heads for a moment of prayer? 
Our Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for all your goodness and mercy. We thank you for all you do for us. You've taken care of us from last week to this week, Lord, and it's not because of anything we've done, but it's because of your grace, your love, your mercy. We pray that you will help us to focus on you for the next few minutes. Help us to spend more time in prayer. Help us to not be so busy with the cares of this life because that's Satan's goal, to keep us busy that we don't have time. Um, and we thank you for loving us, dying to save us. Bless our pastor, bless all of our leaders. Um, be with those who are on their way. Those who are here, we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, I'm going to do this little reading. We'll have a prayer, and we'll close out with a song from Sister Mizell. All right. So this reading is talking about the power of intercession. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, James 5, 16. Some time ago, a certain clergyman tried to comfort a woman whose husband had left town during a revival. He was a bitter agnostic, and he had said he would not be back until that religious flurry was over. The wife hoped her husband would finally be converted by the revival, but now there seemed little chance. The minister, however, invited the woman to attend a morning prayer group he was leading. She dried her tears, determined to attend. The prayer group immediately agreed to pray together over the man's departure. They tackled the challenge with great gusto, asking God to overtake the wayward husband, bring him back, and lead him to Christ. They presented this man by the name to God. That same night, he astounded everyone when he showed up at the evening revival meeting. He had quite a story to tell. He had driven 18 miles into the hills when he was suddenly stopped in his tracks. He could not continue. He knew that he had behaved horribly and he felt that he was a sinner in need of God's grace. A deep conviction came over him to return. The man told the congregation, I now know that I must be born again or I can never see the kingdom of heaven. This unmistakably rescued gentleman took his seat amid the tears and sobs of the whole congregation. That very night, he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. Intercessory prayer is very powerful. Intercessory prayer makes a difference. Intercessory prayer changes things. Here's why. In the controversy between good and evil, God values human freedom. He is doing everything he can to reach every single person before we even pray. Yet God is limited. He is limited by our choices. He will never violate any individual's freedom of choice. He only goes so far. He influences but never coerces. He convicts but never compels. He guides but never forces. When we pray for someone else, God points out his spirit through us to reach them, pours out his spirit to reach them. Intercessory prayers open up new avenues for God to work. It provides God with another opportunity. The messenger of the Lord states it well. It is part of God's plan to do in answer to a prayer of faith what he would not do if we did not pray. That's from the Great Controversy, page 525. When people pray, something happens. Prayer groups have unusual power through the Almighty. Two or three people earnestly praying makes a difference. God hears, God answers, God moves, God touches lives. Do you have a prayer partner? Do you regularly meet in a small intercessory prayer group? Why not ask God to help you find a prayer partner? Why not begin a ministry of intercession in your own life? If you are an intercessor already, 
Why not encourage other people to join you in interceding? Find someone to pray with, write out a prayer list, and watch what God does. You will be amazed. God hears, God answers, God moves, God touches lives. And um, I can say to you that um, when I retired last year, I joined a prayer group that this church has. It made such a difference in my life, and I invite you guys to either start your own prayer group or join our prayer group because prayer does change things. So at this time, I want to um, ask us to bow our heads and we'll pray, and then we'll close with um, a song from Sister Mizell. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for all your goodness and mercy. We thank you, God, for allowing us to take a few moments this morning to talk about prayer. We know that prayer changes things, and we thank you for giving us this opportunity and giving us an avenue to talk to you so that you can make a difference in our lives and in the lives of those we pray for. You know, we have... Um, sick ones among us. Uh, every day in our prayer group, we pray for Sister Green, and I'm so glad she's here with us this morning. I'm glad that her daughter brought her out. We thank you for both of them. We pray for Sister Sims because at one day she's good, the next day not so good. We thank you that she's here with us this morning. We also pray for Brother Raymond every day. We pray for Brother um, Ware. Uh, we pray for Sister McKnight, um, and we just know that there are others who are sick, Lord, that we may not be aware of. We, we ask you to pray for those who are sick among us right now. There may be some who are not feeling well, but they came out anyway. We pray for our youth. Lord, this church used to be um, filled with so many young people. And now we see very few of them. So we put them in your hands and we ask you to send them back. Thank you for the ones that are here. We have a few. We're glad to have them. Uh, we pray for our seniors, Lord. Um, you know, they're getting up in age and things aren't moving and feeling the same, but they're still with us. And we thank you for their wisdom and for their knowledge. We pray for our young adults. Uh, may you continue to strengthen them and keep them um, moving forward in your name. And we pray for those who may be online with us today, Lord. You know what's going on in each heart, in each home, in each mind. Uh, we just give our lives to you. We're living in a world where people will drive by and shoot you for no reason. But we know because of your mercy and your protection that we are here today and we've, you know, made it here safely. Continue to bless us and keep us. There's, there's um, wars going on all around in Ukraine and uh, Israel and Hamas and all those places, Lord. You know the reason. You know whether it, when it will end, whether it will end. You know how it goes. We put it all in your hands. There's disasters with fires and earthquakes and um, flooding and just all kind of things happening all around, Lord. But help us to focus on you and your word and to know that there's hope all around, even though there's uh, discouragement and confusion. We just give it all to you. We thank you for loving us, for dying to save us, and we ask that you would bless Ebenezer, be with those who are here, those who are on their way. Bless and keep us, forgive us, Save us. In your name we pray. Amen. And I forgot to ask if there were any prayer requests, but um, we'll do that next time. But at this time, we will um, call on Sister Mize to close us out. All our sins and griefs to bear. Amen. Let's let's all stand and sing.
to him what a friend we have in Jesus. Hymn number 499. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is that trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer are we weak and heavy laden come but with the load of care. Precious Savior, still I refuse. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thy will find a soul and say, Amen. Praise the Lord.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. There are a few of us in here today, but the Bible says where two or three are gathered, he will be in the midst. Amen. Amen. And so will you join us as we as we invite the presence of the Lord to be here with us today as we sing our introit song, as we acknowledge that we've gathered in this place simply to worship him, to lift up his name. Amen. We've come to hear a word, but we've gathered here for him. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We precious ointment upon the head and ran down upon the beard upon Aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garment. And the dew of Aaron and as the day that deceived upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for your guidance, thank you for your mercy. Spare in our lives so we can come to another Sabbath day they went into your house to give you praise, give you honor and glory. Ask for your blessing that those that are present and those that are not, bless those that are online. But most of all, pray that the Holy Spirit may use us to continue your work throughout the world and throughout this area. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's repeat the fourth commandment, Exodus 28 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that are within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all of them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ebenezer. Uh, 
Everybody, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, and we want to say welcome and a blessed Sabbath to each and every one of us in house and those who are viewing by cyberspace. We want to welcome you. The songwriter said, What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. And then another song says, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Then the Word of God says, Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. So if you have been redeemed by the blood, of the Lamb. Can I get an amen in the house this morning? If you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, even though I can't see you or hear you both on uh, online and cyberspace, will you say praise uh, ye the Lord? Ah, uh, okay, in Jesus' name, uh, amen. It's happy to be in the house of the Lord uh, this morning. I miss each and every one of you all last Sabbath. I miss you all last Sabbath. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you all last Sabbath? Y'all was here last Sabbath? So how did I miss you? I'm not blind. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Lord blessed us uh, last Sabbath as we ended the uh, Black History uh, Week there at uh, Lighthouse uh, right across the way uh, from us. And the Lord blessed us tremendously. And uh, we praise God for his blessing. We praise God uh, for his blessing. Sister Green, uh, Sister Green, uh, bless you. Bless you. Even though we're in, in, in the month of March, uh, but bless you on your, I believe, 88th birthday. Amen. Give a heart amen, everybody. Praise God. Praise God. God is good to you. In Jesus' name, uh, amen. And we thank God for all those uh, February, end of the month, Sutherland and uh, Madrid, St. Anna. And I believe Sister Ida Brown is today, March the 2nd. Sister Ida Brown is today. And so we say happy birthday to each and every one who has been born in the month of March. Let us worship the Lord. I just want to share some announcements with you. It's already in your bulletin. Uh, I just want to emphasize today at 5.15 study and then AYM rehearsal at the same time uh, on this coming Wednesday evening our chapter 31 agency of evil spirits in the book of great controversy uh, if you're not attending you're missing some dynamic information as we prepare for the end time and of the Lord next Friday Next Friday, all deacons, all elders, all deaconesses, you are required to be present here for communion rehearsal at 7 p.m. Next Friday at 7 p.m. because on next Sabbath, we will celebrate the Lord's uh, Supper. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper. May the Lord bless us uh, as we worship him uh, in spirit and in truth. And we see the month of March is Women's History Month. And we say bless to all uh, of uh, the women of uh, Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Church. May God bless you. Now let us continue our worship in spirit uh, and in truth. Praise God. Our praise team will come and give us our welcome and uh, greeting song as we greet uh, one another in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, this man wants us to know. He like to eat, you know. He want us to know that he's trying to feed all of us after service today. So after service today, uh, don't run out of here. Just take a plate with you, dine with us as we fellowship together for our Sabbath lunch. And every first Sabbath of the month, he's planning to feed us good, wholesome uh, food. Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, it's, it's good to see you all this morning. Uh, before we sing our welcome, I'd like, to, I'd like to sing happy birthday to Sister Green. If you don't mind, Sister Green, we'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Can we do that, church? All together? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. bless you. Amen. May he bless you. Uh, if we'll just take this 
brief second to greet each other. If we can make it a little warmer in here. Can we shake a hand? Can we say Jesus loves you and so do I? It's so easy to love. Our welcome song says, it's so easy. It's so easy. So easy. So easy to love. The Jesus, the Jesus in me. Was the Jesus in you? The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. So easy to love. The smile on my face in love. The smile on my face. Smile on your face, it's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy to love. So easy to love. The Jesus in me, he loves the Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me. It's so easy. It's so easy. With His help, it's easy. It's so 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 easy. So easy to love. Amen. Amen. It's so easy to love with the help of our Lord. Will you join us as we sing our opening song? Our opening song. Please stand as we sing our opening song, hymn 245. All together. I would know more of his grace to others show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more more about Jesus more more about Jesus more of his saving fullness More of his 
the Son is own, riches and glory all is own. More of His kingdom sure increase, more of His coming brings a peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness. Sing that one more time. More, more, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of His saving fullness. More of His love who died for me. scripture for this morning will be found in the book of Psalms, chapter 37. Psalms chapter 37. I'll be reading verses 30 through 40. Psalms chapter 37, verses 30 to 40. And it reads, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the right, watcheth the righteous, and <clears throat> seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a great bay tree. Yet he passeth away, and lo, he was not yea. I sought him, but could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together the end of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. It's prayer time now in Ebenezer. Father, we, we come before you again, giving thanks and praise. We thank you for bringing us through this trying week, Lord. We thank you for life, health, strength, food, rain, clothing, and shelter, all of a reasonable portion. But Lord, we thank you mostly for your son, Jesus Christ. Before we move any further, Lord, we ask that you forgive us where we've fallen short in thought, deed, or action. 
Help us to come up on higher ground and serve you better. We ask that you look down upon this gathering this morning with the eye of tender pity and compassion, Lord. We ask you to look down upon each and every individual, each and every family that is represented here this morning. We ask that you look down upon those that are missing from our small gathering. Be with those that are on their way, if any. Look down upon each and every one that's viewing or listening online. We lift up each and every one, Lord. We lift up those among us that are feeling under the weather, sick. We ask that you would look down upon them with the eye of tender pity and compassion. And you know them each by name, Lord. We thank you for allowing Sister Maybell to come out this morning. We lift up Raymond, Brother Ware, those that I do not remember, Lord, we ask that you stop by and be the great physician. Touch them with your healing hand. As finite, sinful man, I know nothing of what their needs are, Lord, but you, all-powerful, all-righteous, infinite God, you know each and every one of us what we stand in need of. And this time we petition that you grant us desires. But Lord, only if it is your will. We lift up the leaders of this country. You know their intentions, Lord. And we ask that you take control and deal as you see fit. We lift up those that have fallen prey to wartime, to natural disaster, to social injustice. We ask that you visit, be what they need you to be, Lord. Comfort them, give them peace. We lift up those that are going through something mentally, Lord. Be it family, be it finance, be it health. And we ask that you comfort them, help them to realize that you are still in control. And if we stay in your will, Lord, we have nothing to fear. Give us that peace that passes all understanding. Give us what we need. We lift up this church as a whole, individually and collectively, Lord. We ask that you would strengthen us as we go forward and attempt to further your work. Give us what we need to carry on. Give us the boldness to speak confidently about you and your word, Lord. Help us that we will witness at every occasion. Help us that we will do what is right and pleasing in your sight. Bless the man servant that will be breaking the bread of life today. Dip him down in your storehouse. Give him words from on high. Help us all to receive them and put them into effect in our lives. Help us. Bless us. Love us. But most of all, Lord, we need you to save us. In Jesus' name. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. 
In your hands are strength and power. They exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Deacons will come forward, take up the tithe and offering. to the Lord for he is good yes he is good Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your mercy and thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your tithing that we have given to you. May it be used for the continued work throughout this church and throughout the world. Ask for your blessing and those that give and those that have not. May your Holy Spirit use each and every one of us to do the things to give you praise, give you hand and glory. Thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We give thee but thy own. briefly bow your heads as we invite the presence of the Lord closer. Lord, thank you so much for this day, for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to be able to gather once again in your house, uh, to be able to lift up your name, uh, to be able to praise you, to worship you, but also to be able to get a blessing from you, Lord. We ask that today that you will be here with us. You said that you are here. And so we, we acknowledge your presence, Lord. We ask that our worship is accepted by you. Keep us until you come, Lord. In your name, amen. Amen. Our, uh, our first song uh, is titled Everlasting God. It comes from Psalms chapter 27, verse 1. Uh, Psalms chapter 27, verse 1 uh, says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Yes. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If God is before us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Would you join us if you know it, if you don't learn it? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will 
trust in you. The Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Can we talk to him today? I will wait on you. I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. Yeah. I will trust in you. The next part goes like this. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? of the Lord I will remain confident in this I will 
see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in the I will time. see the goodness of the Lord. Because you always keep your word. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The way it looks right now is not how it will always be. I will remain confident in this I will see the mercy of the Lord because he said he'll be good I will remain confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord because the Lord is my light and salvation whom shall i fear whom shall i be afraid if the lord is your light and salvation whom shall you fear whom shall you be afraid so you should wait on him You should wait on him, and you should trust in him. You should trust in him. Because he says in his word, if you trust in the Lord, with all your heart if you lean not onto your own understandings in all your ways if you acknowledge him he will direct your path he says if I be lifted up if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me can we take a moment can we just take a moment to reflect can we take a moment to reflect on who we used to be and how God moved in our life. You know, God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he told them because he knows how he created us and he knows how sin affected us. He knows that sin affects our memory. And oftentimes it causes us to forget of what he's done for us. Oftentimes it makes us believe that where we are currently is because of our own doing. Sin does that to us. It pollutes our mind. It makes us lose focus. And so we see results. And the results that we see, we credit to ourselves, not remembering that he's the one that's allowed us to be able to put food on our table. He's the one that's allowed us to be able to pay our car note. He's the one that allows us to be able to dress up nicely. We all look beautiful in here. It's because of his grace and his mercy that we have a building that is still standing other parts in the world I, I i continue to say this you know week after week as i come up here I, I i think about what's going on in the congo what's going on in sudan what's going on in israel and palestine he said if i be lifted up though he will draw God, we live. 
lift your name high hands up hearts open wide as the sky we lift you high we lift you high hands up hearts open wide as we cry god we lift your name high hands up hearts open wide as the sky we lift you high we lift you high hands up hearts open wide as we cry god we lift your name high let all the other names fade away let all the other names fade away till there's only you there's all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place hands up hearts open wide as we cry we lift you high we lift you high hands up hearts open wide as we cry god we lift your name high sing hands up hands up hearts open wide names fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place let all the other names fade let all the other names fade away cancer tell it to fade away let all the other names fade away till there's Parkinson's Let can fade. Arthritis can fade. Jesus, take your Jesus, place. Take your Jesus, place. take your place. Yeah. Let all the other names fade. Let all the other names fade away. Let our problems fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only Until you.
know we didn't practice this. I'm sorry. But Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Can we stay right there? Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is. In case you needed to know. Jesus is the way. Jesus is. Last time, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Despite what's going on in the world, Jesus is the way. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. He's the answer. He's the key that opens every door. He's the answer for the smallest question, the largest problem. He's still the answer. The psalmist says in Psalms chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, my guide. He's my leader. He's the one that goes before me. I'll have nothing to want. I'll have nothing to fear. I have nothing that I need because my needs are taken care of. As long as I put the shepherd before me, my needs are taken care of. This song is, is from Psalms chapter 23. It's a familiar one. We've sung it before. I'm sure you guys have heard it. Uh, but I challenge you to make Psalms 23 a personal, a personal psalm for you. Let the Lord be your shepherd. Let him guide you. And know that wherever you go, you will not be alone. my shepherd he goes before me defender behind me I won't fear I'm filled with anointing Overflow. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't. I won't fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I He's my car. 
always guides, he always guides me. me through mountains and through mountains and, and the valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restore, restore.
Keep that slide on. Keep that slide on. Amen. Amen. Letitia, put that slide back on. Put that slide back on. Hallelujah. I am not alone. He's my comfort. Always hold me close. Jesus is the answer for the world today. There's no other. Sister Sims, I put this up for you and for your family. I just realized and heard that your sister passed last week. Sister Sims, hallelujah, you're not alone. He's your comfort, always holding you close. Sister Sims, may the blessings of God, may the anointing of God, may the comfort of God be with you and your family during this time of sadness. May God put his hands upon you and your family. Jesus already have taken the place of your sister. Now she's resting uh, in the care of Jesus Christ. So may we bow our heads as we pray for Sister Sims and her family that God will comfort them, stay close to them in Jesus' name. Father. You are always uh, close to us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm asking that you will stand close by the side of Sister Sims and her family. She lost her sister, oh God. And so we ask in Jesus' name right now that you will minister to the family. Ever let them know that you're with them always. Even in situations like this, you're still with them. And you understand, and therefore, Lord, we leave all the issues of life into thy hands, we pray. Strengthen the Sims family. Let them walk strongly in the might of Jesus Christ, their Savior. And when you shall come in the clouds of glory, may her sister and others that have fallen asleep, may we meet each other in the earth made new. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, music ministry, praise team, musician for a beautiful setting of music today. Do you appreciate the style of music that uh, the praise team bring to us every Sabbath? Praise God. Let's, let's give them a hearty amen. Let's give God is upon them. Thank you, Stephen and the praise team and our musicians who play so eloquently. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read, as we move into our message, the book of Psalms, the 37th chapter. And I would read only verses 39 and 40 from the New King James Version, Psalms 37, verses 39 and 40. And it reads as thus, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked. And save them because they, what everybody, they trust in him. Celebrate your source of strength. Celebrate your source of strength. Come now, O oh God, and just step in my place. 
move me aside and have thine own way, we pray. And we give thee all the praise, honor, and glory. What will transpire here this hour, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Celebrate your source of strength. Reflecting on Nehemiah and how he led those who were captive, he led them from captivity to victory. The Bible says the people wept. They mourned. They were taken captive. The walls of their city, Jerusalem, were broken down, which led people to experience sadness and sorrow and fear for why? Because there was something special in the midst of the walls of Jerusalem. What if, what if the walls of Ebenezer come tumbling down? What if the lights come tumbling down? There because of a special atmosphere in this place. What feeling will you have? Will you have, like those of Israel, the walls of Jerusalem were broken down? Will you experience sadness, sorrow, fearfulness? And if you do, why? I'm going to tell you why. Because Jerusalem, who was a spiritual and political center of Judah. Without the walls, hear me clearly, without the walls, uh, Jerusalem uh, could hardly be considered a city at all. So Nehemiah and Ezra worked together to build the people spiritually and morally so that the restoration will be complete. The wall of Jerusalem came tumbling down. Nehemiah, Ezra got together and said, hey, we must rebuild the spirituality of the people. If the wall of Ebenezer shall come tumbling down, you and I, we've got to work together to rebuild the spirituality of every one of you in this place. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 15, the Bible says that the walls were finished. It was finished in 52 days. Therefore, Nehemiah led his people to a great victory. The broken walls have been repaired. Now that the wall had been repaired, the people, him and now, the people had risen above their fears. They had overcome their adversaries. Their labor had been rewarded because Ezra and Nehemiah worked together with God to rebuild the spirituality of Jerusalem. Let me tell you, I think I said it when I first got here. I'm not so much concerned about baptism. They will come. My number one concern for you and I is that you and I grow spiritually together. Come on, say amen, everybody. We got to grow spiritually together. And when we grow spiritually together, whatever fear that we may have, they will be cast away. So therefore, whether it's divine worship, whether it's prayer meeting, whether it's afternoon Bible study, whether it is your personal Bible study and personal prayer life, spirituality should grow because Jesus is in the midst of you and I. Their labor been rewarded. They overcame their adversary. Their people had risen above their fear. And therefore, Ezra and Nehemiah's co-partner, they led out into the dedication service. The record says now, there were shouts of praise being lifted up 
to the Lord. Take your Bible and go with me to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse number 5 and 6. Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 5 and 6. Nehemiah. All right, come on. Where is Nehemiah? Nehemiah, Esther, Joel, Psalm, Proverbs. All right, Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 5 and verse 6. The Bible says, now Ezra and Nehemiah, they led out into a dedication service. And the record said, there was shout of praise being lifted up to the Lord. Listen to what? Nehemiah 8, uh, verse 5 uh, and verse 6 there. The Bible says, uh, And Ezra opened the book uh, in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen! Amen! while lifting up their hands, uh, and they bowed their heads uh, and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. When uh, God gives you the victory, Ebenezer, you are to stand up. You are to lift your hands up, and you are to give up God some praise. The Bible says they shout glory. It was nothing. Why? Because the city were rebuilt. Their lives were rebuilt spiritually. And any time your life is rebuilt spiritually, you ought to give God some praise. Come on, say amen in this house. The people, the people were encouraged to celebrate. They were told to be joyful, not solemn or sad. You know, I do have a sermon, Scott. I do have a sermon called Sad Vintage. We got some sad vintage around here. I wonder if any sad vintage in Ebenezer this morning. If you are in the hand of God, there is no need be sad so many times. You ought to be joyful. Why? Because God woke you up this morning, Herman. Why? God gave you strength this morning. God bless you six days of the week and allow you to come to worship him on Sabbath. You ought to come to church ready to give God some praise. The people were encouraged to celebrate. They were told to be joyful, don't be solemn, don't be sad. What a mighty God we serve. You ought to be glad. Come on, say amen, everybody. They were to celebrate the source of their strength. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, we ought to celebrate all sources of strength. I'm going to give you three sources of strength today. Number one, the joy of the Lord provides strength. Did you get the first word? I said the joy of the Lord provides strength. Let me read Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 9 and verse 10. Nehemiah 8. Verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This is holy, or this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of of the law. Verse number 10, the Bible said, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portion to those from whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord, what everybody, is your strength. We ought 
to be the most happiest people in the universe. Because when I need strength, all I need to do is I'm happy in the Lord. For the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Listen to what inspiration says from the book, Ministry of Healing, page 281. Ministry of Healing, page 281. It says, uh, these are the key notes to life. Here are the key notes to life. Inspiration said, gratitude, rejoicing, benevolence, trust in God's love and care. These are our health greatest safeguard. If you want to be healthy and have a healthy continence and have a healthy body, the inspiration said, be grateful, be thankful, rejoice, be kind, trust in God's love and care, for these are the health greatest safeguards. She goes on to say to the Israelites, they were to be the very keynote of a life. So, in later years, when the law of God was read in Jerusalem to the captains, returned from Babylon, and the people wept because of their transgression, gracious words were spoken to them. You know, the Bible says... In Proverbs, jot it down, Proverbs 17 uh, and verse 22, the Bible says, uh, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. It's better than aspirin. It's better than Tylenol. The more happier we are, the more healing uh, will take place. The more joyful we are, the more grateful we are, the more rejoicing that we do, help is coming inside and healing uh, is taking place. When you walk around sad, looking sad all the time and looking pitiful all the time, where is your joy? Life ain't that bad after all. There's some good in life, you know. Gratitude, rejoice, benevolence, which is kindness, trust in God's love and care. These are your health, greatest safeguard. So the first source of strength, the joy of the Lord provides strength. Nehemiah and his people had faced many obstacles they could have become discouraged, saying that it's impossible to rebuild. They could have compromised with their enemies, but the joy of the Lord enabled them to keep on building. The joy that comes only from God kept the people building. The joy of the Lord should keep you and I. In spite of what we face, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I will move forward in the power, in the might of Jesus Christ. Come on, say hallelujah. Uh, they could have compromised with their enemies. But thank God the joy of the Lord enabled them to keep building. You know, there's a song. There's a song that says, Shakira, there's a song that says, Joy, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? I've got the joy, joy, joy. Where? To say, I know the devil doesn't like it, but it's where, oh well, 
I know the devil doesn't like it down in my heart. Down in. Did you know what you just said? It's down in my heart to stay. Don't let anybody, any situation, any individual, any group uh, take away the joy of the Lord, which gives you strength. Come on, say amen, everybody. Oh, let me go to the book of Ezra. Let me go to the book of Ezra, chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. Ezra, chapter 3, verse 8 through 11. Ezra, chapter 3. Verse 8 through 11, the Bible simply says, uh, Ezra 3, 8 through 11, the Bible says, uh, verse number 8, now in the second month of uh, the second year of their coming to the house of God at Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, Jeshu, the son of Josak, and the rest of their brethren, the priests and the Levites and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem began work and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and above to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. Did you hear what it said? It said that they appointed the Levites from 20 years old to lead, the oversee the work of the house of the Lord. Verse 9, then Jeshua with his sons and brother Kamea with his sons and the sons of Judah, arose as one to oversee those working on the house of God, the sons of Hanadad, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. Verse number 10, when uh, the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord, according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. Verse number 11, and they sang a responsibly praising and giving thanks to God, saying what everybody, for he is one and his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. The people gave a joy and a celebration to the Lord Jesus Christ for the house of the Lord was rebuilt. Let me remind you, let me remind you, the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord is not necessarily the walls The light, these beams, the house of the Lord is you and I. So, Ebenezer, when you as the house of the Lord is being rebuilt, the process is going on, what shall you Shall you respond? Stop coming in here. Stop coming in here. As if God hadn't done anything for you. Come in here. Even though, even though, you may have had a hellish week and you come in here with a smile on your face. We don't know what's going on inside, but come in with a smile on your face and turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus and you can smile the rest of your day. If God has done something for you, Ebenezer, we, we may practice this one day, you know. When you come through those double glass doors, well, there's four of them first. One, two, three, four. One, wait a minute. One, two, three, four. There's four of them. And then you got two more. When you come in those glass doors, you know what I want you to do? If God has done something for you, come in here ready to give God some praise. Come on, say amen in here. Come in here. Ready. I don't care who 
who's here, I don't care who's looking at me. You just don't know what I've been through just last night. I was washing my car yesterday in my driveway. The guy walked by. Man, you got it looking good, sir. I said, I'm trying, I'm trying. And he kept walking. And then he came by. And we stopped and we talked. I said, where you live, my man? Oh, I live on the next street right over. I said, oh, how long you been here? Uh, just, just about a year or so. And we start talking, we start talking. And he found out, he said, you got to be a Christian. I said, oh, yeah. Do you believe in God? He said, well, I believe that there is a creator, but I can't give him no name. There is a creator, but I can't give him no name. I believe. I said, well, if you believe in the creator, can I tell you what his name? <laughs> can I tell you what his name is? His name is Jesus. He said, oh, Okay, that's what the Bible says. Yes, I stand on the word of God. And we start talking, he started talking. And I said, let me tell you about the Christian week. And he said, oh, yeah. I showed him the calendar on the phone. I said, I said what day is the first day? I said, look at that. S-M-T, you know, W-T-H, uh, uh, F. He said, Saturday. I said, no, boy. What is the first day of the week? Sunday, Monday, ah, the seventh day. Well, if God created me on the sixth day, what happened on the seventh day? You better tell me what the Bible says. I said, that's all I do, tell you what the Bible says. I'm not telling you my own opinion. I'll tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, after creation week, God ended his work what he had created and made, and he rested on the seventh day. That's Sunday? I said, no, Saturday. I stopped washing my car, walked with him to his house, and we was out there for a long time. I said, you're halfway there. You know there's a creator, but I'm going to give you his name. Oh, what the Bible says, right? Yeah, you don't believe in the Bible? Uh, no, I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in religion, but I believe there's a creator. I said, oh, Lord, I got to help him now. I got to help him now. But to God be the glory, we left on a good note. And, and he's going to call me tonight, and we're going to get there tomorrow. And I'm going to lay it on him. I'm going to lay it on him. So, whatever you have experienced throughout the week, even last night, if God has done something for you, come on in here and act like God has done something for you. Come on, say amen, everybody. Ah, you may not be a one that say amen a lot, but at least have a pleasant look that God has done something for you in spite of it all. Come on, say to God be the glory. Great things uh, he has done. That's why the people, when the people of uh, 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 Israel, when their lives were rebuilt, uh, they could not help but shout glory to God when Nehemiah and Ezra got together and had to read the word and the people stood up because the people realized something took place. Spirituality failed. I don't care what goes on in your life in this world, but when something goes down, don't you dare let your spirituality fall. Nehemiah, Lord, help me. The joy of the Lord enabled them to keep building. We ought to be joyful for God's love, for his grace, and for his salvation. Are you grateful for the Lord's love, his grace, and salvation? For the joy of the Lord will replenish our strength every single day. Every single 
day. Isaiah, I'm going to read it right quickly. Isaiah 52, 9. The Bible says, break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The joy of the Lord will replenish our strength every single day. So your first source of strength is the joy of the Lord will provide strength. The second one is the presence of the Lord provides strength. Not only the joy, but the presence is the same. The presence of God will give you strength. Ah, let's go to Psalms 37. Ah, scripture reading for this morning. Psalm 37 and the verse number 39 and 40. The Bible says, Psalm 37, 39 and 40. The Bible says this. Ah, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust the in him. Don't worry about the wicked one. Don't worry about your enemy. Jesus said, I will take care of them. You just have faith in me and watch me work on your behalf. The presence of the Lord provides strength. One of my favorite passages of Scripture is Psalms 40. 6 and verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Have mercy. For the Bible says, for man is born unto trouble, Joel 5, 7. The Bible says man is, is of few days and full of trouble, Joel 14, verse 1. And in John 16, 33, in the world, ye shall have trouble. Let me tell you, the word already gives you encouragement. But the songwriter gives you encouragement too. Oh, the songwriter said, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Kind of hoarse that. Is here. Y'all need to help me, Sister Rose. Is here. <laughs> the presence of the Lord. The power of the Lord. Is here. We all go through trouble. Man is born full of trouble. Few days in the world you shall have trouble. But thank God, Christian, we do not have to face trouble alone. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 20, I'm with you always. Hebrew 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Thank God for his C.H. Spurgeon says this. C.H. Spurgeon said, when trouble overthrows the wicked, it only drives the righteous to their strong helper who rejoices to uphold them. Finally, not only the joy, not only the presence of the Lord provides strength, but the promises, the promises of the Lord provide strength. Oh, let me read Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 15. Isaiah 30 and verse 15. The Bible says, Isaiah 30 and verse number 15. The Bible says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rescue shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength, but you would not. Inspiration says, step to Christ. 
page 71. Step to Christ, page 71. The rest that this verse is talking about, the rest is not found in, hear me clearly, the rest is not found in inactivity. For in the Savior's invitation, the promise of rest is united with the call to labor. He said, take my and ye shall find rest. The heart that rests most fully upon Christ will be most earnest and active in labor for him. We must labor. Take my yoke upon me, you, and learn of me. I am meek and lowly, and rest shall come to your soul when we take up the work of God. God will give you rest. God's promises are strong anchors in life's storm. Read First Peter, I mean Second Peter chapter one, verse four, one through four. Second Peter chapter one, verse one through four. God's promises are strong anchors in life's storms. God's promises bring strength in times of wanting. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Do you this morning, Ebenezer, have a promise? This is a personal question. Do you this morning uh, have a promise from God that gives you strength uh, in a troubling time? Just think about it. Do you, as an individual, have a promise that you can cling on to, hold on to, trust in God that gives you strength in a troubling times? Think about it. Discouragement. That's why I don't like to hang around people who who sad all the time. Ain't got nothing good to say. Pitiful face expression all the time. Man, what's wrong? What's wrong? Discourage. You know what we should do? We should say words that will build each other up. Come on, say amen, everybody. Say something that will encourage me. Say something that will encourage your brother, your sister. Say something that will give me hope to know if I just hold on, my change will come. Discouragement drains away your strength. But faith Give the victory, enabling us to overcome discouragement and find peace in God. So, Ebenezer, let's celebrate our sources of strength. Let's celebrate the joy of the Lord. Let's celebrate. The presence of the Lord, let's celebrate the promises of the Lord. The presence of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, and the promises of the Lord. If you do not have a promise that you can cling on to, find one. Claim it. Declare it by the power of God, you will, in the midst of it, you will rejoice. Because the promise of the Lord is, God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. That means that he's right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want it. But he'll be there right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Find a promise. Appreciate the presence of the Lord. And appreciate 
the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Ebenezer, celebrate the sources of your strength. Let's be like children of Israel. When their walls were broken down, their spirituality failed. Fear came into their hearts. They didn't know what to do. In the midst of your daily activity, remember the joy of the Lord will give you strength to endure. Remember, God says, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the ages. God is with you every step of the way. Thank God for his presence and rely on the promises of his word. That's why the songwriter says, standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of Christ my King. Father, thank you for the example of Israel in Jerusalem. When the spiritual walls failed, And they became frightened. Thank God for Nehemiah and Ezra coming together, listening to you how to rebuild the spiritual lives of walls of your people. Oh God, if the spiritual lives of, of us as Ebenezer individually are crumbling down, Oh, God, in Jesus' name, may we pray, may we study, may we worship together to receive more strength and rebuild our spiritual walls. If our spiritual walls are crumbling collectively as a church as a whole, I'm asking right now in the name and the power of Jesus Christ, Reveal it to me, O oh God. And me and the elders, we'll work together to rebuild the spiritual walls of this congregation together because that is what's most important, the spirituality of your people. Have mercy upon us, we pray. Forgive us. Give us a fresh new beginning. And we will give thee all the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to thank our pastor for that wonderful message. Please don't take, take it for ourselves alone. Tell others of God's love and his mercy so we can get this church to be full. Please stand for our closing hymn, 482. All together.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the message. And we do pray, Heavenly Father, that our lives may be a light to shine, to give you praise, give you honor and glory, and to witness and tell others of your divine love, your mercy and your soon coming. Ask for your divine blessing. Help us that we may do our utmost best to love our brothers and sisters and to give you praise and glory. Thank you for your message. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Uh, we ask that you will allow the Spirit to lead you this week, that he will guide you, that the Spirit will go before you, um, and that we'll see you back next week here for communion. The ushers will lead you out. Have a blessed week.
Oh